Hey, Badminton World. Welcome to episode five of the Tokyo 2020 show, the show for badminton players by badminton players, where we bring you the latest news, results, opinions, predictions, and polls, and much, much more. My name's Jeff, this is Henry. We're the hosts of the Badminton Podcast and Volant, and we're really excited that the Tokyo 2020 games has been awesome so far. So Henry, what's been happening? We're in day four at yeah. the moment. Yeah. It's been a lot of crazy competition. I mean, I feel like we say this every single time, yeah. but crazy competition, things are really heating up. Uh, day three and a half now. Uh, yesterday, of course, we had uh, Ding Sweat uh, and Tang Chun Man. Uh, they won their match, we talked about that match. But uh, what's interesting about that uh, is that Ding Sweat, she is, uh, this is her third Olympics, um, but she made it. She made a bit of a funny quote um, stating that Tang Chun Man made it into the quarters finals yeah. um, in his first Olympics. Go, yeah. um, but she's still very happy about that. I think um, there'll be a quote on screen for you to see as well. Yeah, it is quite funny because I guess playing so many times and you, you don't get through and then you finally get through, you find the right partner, for example, but Tan Chun Man, first go, good on him. Um, so, so well done to them. Uh, let's move on to the men's doubles now. So mm. Mohamed Hassan, Hendra Seti won. We did speak about it yesterday in our Do Not Miss match against Aaron Chia, Soi, Soi Wu Yik from Malaysia. Mm. I said that potentially the Malaysians were, could, were gonna win that one, um, even though their head-to-head -head was pretty poor beforehand. Yeah. But you uh, did mention that the daddies was the safer choice. Yeah. And that of course Soi Wu Yik uh, is very prone prone to errors, uh, and he did did make quite a few last night. Yeah, look, I found that the, the daddies were just so solid. Like, mm. even if they were down in the games or losing points, it never felt like they weren't in control of the match. They just, just, just too solid. And I think Aaron played really, really well. Yeah. He dominated rear court, front court. He, I think he created a bit more than and so, than so will Yik. Yeah. And I expected So to be a bit more creative in that situation, yeah. yeah. Because it's normally the other way around, right? And I think we saw him a couple of times try and challenge the net, but- But then Hendra yeah. is just, just on all it. over it. Yeah, just Com all completely all, all over it. Mm. So like, obviously Hendra and Asan, they're, they're playing really well. It, they did play together in the Rio 2016 Olympics. Mm. And obviously this Olympic games means so much to them. So we did manage to hear what Hendra and Asan thought about their, about Tokyo 2020 in comparison to 2016 in Rio and how they think they're gonna play their best this time. So mm. let's, let's see it now. Memang waktu itu kita enggak enggak bisa keluar dari tekanan itu ya. Dan sekarang mungkin kita lebih relax ya. Jadi Indonesia ada dua match double. Jadi itu otomatis akan apa ya mempengaruhi ini ya psikis kita ya. Jadi kalau berdua dua pasang itu lebih baik daripada satu pasang kalau di Olimpiade. Saya enggak mau juga terlalu ambisi terlalu berlebih. Jadi ya step by step aja mungkin targetnya pengen bawa medali. Ya, tapi nanti di sana juga tinggal lebih fokus step by step karena ya dari awal apapun bisa terjadi ya. Mungkin kejadian seperti 2016 ada peringat pernah menang sama kita di open open sebelumnya pas di Olimpik kita juga bisa kalah ini. Gitu. Ya, saya rasa juga apapun bisa terjadi jadi jadi kita harus benar-benar persiapan persiapan itu. So of course we also had uh, them backing it up this morning yeah. against Choi and so who were actually looking a, a bit a bit more composed compared to when they played the Malaysians the other day. Um, but they did manage to win that um, in, in three sets, mm. three three quite close sets. Um, so it was yeah, it was really really good to I guess for, for the daddies to solidify um, their position as, as the top pair mm. in, uh, in Group D. Um, and I, I guess they've really taken on all of that experience and the learnings um, at 2016 when they did lose out uh, in the group stage uh, to both Chai Biao Hongwei uh, as well as Endo and, and Haikawa. Haikawa from yeah, Japan, yeah, yeah, exactly. So they did, mm -hmm. did take that learnings on board and they, they do definitely seem so solid and so in control. Yeah, yeah. But the rest of Group D there, look, it was a pretty close um, race between Choi and Sio and then Chia and So from Malaysia. Mm. Um, but it does look like the Malaysians will probably proceed through to the knockout rounds, um, provided that they do beat the Canadians in Hoshu and Yakura later tonight. Mm. Mm. But speaking of men's doubles still, Group A, Henry, you <laughs> called it the you called it the group of death. 
mm. um, but it's, it's been crazy there. So Kevin and Marcus, um, that, they'll go through. Um, even though they did lose to to Wang Chilin and Li Yang today. Yeah, this morning they they literally kept their Olympic dream alive, didn't they? Yeah, they were going home. If they didn't mm. win that match, they were going home. So, excellent, excellent result yeah. for them. I, I feel that I was always when during the match, it did feel like Kevin and Marcus they would they they lost the first, they they won the second, mm. but then it did feel like they could switch and change gear. And every yeah. time I felt that they were starting to take control, then trying to get away with the match. Yeah, right? yeah. The, the type the type A pair were able to come back and play really well. I think that for me personally, I think mm. um, Wang Wang Li Chin Wang Chi Li Wang Chi Li played <laughs> Wang, Wang Chi Li played really really well. Like his yeah. attack was brutal. Yeah, and just was following, relentless. Yeah, yeah relentless. he was following his attacks to the to the net and. Yeah, he was yeah. he was getting through and being well supported by Liang as mm. well. Um, normally very creative, but yeah, sometimes makes makes a few mistakes because he is the one trying to create the create the opportunities for Wang Chilin. But today he was really on point. Yeah, yeah. So good work for them. They've saved their Olympic dreams there. Mm. Um, moving on to injury news, there uh, Laura Sorosi from Hungary did have to withdraw from the women's singles, so she mm. won't be able to play Sonia Chia tonight in yeah. the in 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 the from Malaysia. Sorry. Yeah. Um, in the lady singles. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and last night, that mixed draw, the knockout mixed draw came out last night. Mm -hmm. um, so if you if haven't you, seen it. Yep, check the screen now. Uh, we're gonna talk through this, Jeff. Um, so, what do you think? Look, I think that if, if we're looking at the draw in itself, like Praveen versus Zheng Siwei, like mm -hmm. that's the one where it's like, whoa. Yeah. That, that's a hard first quarter final match. Of course, they're all mm. hard, right? It's a quarter finals. But you look at the other points in the draw, and I think Marcus and Lauren, even though the Hong Kong pair of CN Sweet and Tang Chung Man are very strong, I think that's probably a good pair for them because yeah. they, they do have a good record, right? Yeah, they, I think they beat them in three sets of the 2020 All England. So mm. yeah. going into that match psychologically, I think they, they will have a slight advantage with, yeah. the, with the previous win. So that's uh, a pretty good draw for them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, will, it will be a very interesting match and certainly a, a good draw for them to hopefully take home a medal. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Yuta and Arisa, the mm. Jap Jap Japanese versus Dechipol and Sapsuri. Mm. And I believe that they're one head-to-head uh, -head one love up against the Thai pair as well. Yeah, they won that, uh, I think, in straight, um, mm -hmm. straight games. Um, and then finally, we've got So Sung Jae, Cha Yu Jong, the two left-handers. Interestingly, mm -hmm. There's actually two pairs with two left-handers, and that's that's the Hong Kong pair and the Korean pair. Yeah, it doesn't happen yeah. very often, does no, it? No, it doesn't. Mm. Happen. It doesn't happen very often, but they are playing Wang Yilu, Wang Gongping. Mm -hmm. um, that that's going to be pretty epic. Um, so, it, what do you think? It, who's who we're going to see in the finals? Finals. I think I've got to say Zheng Wei is going to make it through. Um, it depends how Praveen can play. Like I don't mm. think Praveen and Lati have played that well this game. Mm, I don't no, think yeah, not so they're going to have to turn it up against them. Mm. I think that yeah, probably Zheng Wei. And I think down the bottom, I think that you turn Arissa. Like yeah. I think that Arissa is playing really well, and it's going to be. I think they're going to play the Chinese. Yeah. Um, Wang and Huang mm. in the, the semi-final, but yeah. I, I think maybe the Japanese pair. In the I would final. love to see that final, to be honest. I, I, I agree, and, I, and I, I hope that, that those are the two pairs that end up in the finals, because that's going to be it's gonna be epic. epic game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's move on to our guest for today's show. So, today on the show, we have Kestudis Navikas from Lithuania. Now, for those who don't know him, he was a professional men's singles player. Um, for, for many, many years, he played at the 2008 Beijing Olympic Games, and he had a former world ranking of number 37 in men's singles. He was also the coach at the Center for Excellence in Denmark, which is, is a great center for a lot of singles players. So Kestis, we all know that you have been at the Olympic Games yourself, 2008 in Beijing, but you've also played so many other international tournaments what is the difference between playing in Olympics compared to playing in just a normal international tournament? Yeah, first of all, the difference is that it's only once per four years. And uh, like in Tokyo case, it's once per five years. <laughs> and um, yeah, the difference is that you kind of like feel that uh, you just got that one chance. And some of the players, of course, they play only once. And some of the players, they play twice or three times. But at that moment, you feel that's very special. Uh, and uh, then you feel the pressure to play your best because you know that you uh, you uh, have only one or two chances, right? So 
that pressure is really different. Uh, I really feel that the media like attention is really different and you can feel that the whole country behind you is watching you and supporting kind of like you, but at the same time uh, people are expecting from you. So that pressure uh, is definitely a, a, yes, a different thing. Uh, so Th those are the main things and the, the pressure to perform at your best level because you want to make it as best as you can uh those are the few things uh, that pops out in my head now yeah uh, it uh, i think you know you, you made it pretty clear that the it is a one in four or in the case of tokyo one in five chance and, and it's it's hard to balance out that that the excitement the nerves and and all those different things and it uh, and as you said the the media is different as well it is a very different um uh sort of uh, olympics this time because there are no spectators around so to have the country you know back you it, it's it's a it's a lot different to when you were playing uh, in 2008 um so in in terms of you know how you think players should best manage those i guess expectations or nerves is it any different to when you're playing in any other tournament yeah, this is probably the main thing, you know, like if I'm the coach or or when I was a player, uh, you really have to uh, to like separate the buzz, the vibe of Olympic Games. And it's very easy to get involved into that buzz. You see all the best athletes around, you see uh, all the best matches, uh, you want to go here and there, but it's really, really important in my mind to separate your own performance and the buzz and the vibe and the whole publicity of what's going around you yeah so uh so uh in my case uh and i also advise to my players when they go focus on yourself it's really really easy to get involved in all the nice things but you are there to perform and really, really stay focused, uh, have your routines, have your rhythm, go to sleep, go to eat at the same times as you normally do and just keep it focused as long as you are performing. Uh, so, yeah, that's one of the most important things, I think, that some of the players get involved too much in their uh, in that buzz uh, and then uh, they lose the rhythm of their performance. Yeah, I think that that excitement Olympics is definitely huge. But I guess in Tokyo, because there's not much socializing, there's not much stuff you can do outside of your matches. And when you go to the dining hall, it's very restrictive that maybe this is already, it's helping that it's helping the, the players focus more because they don't have the choice to socialize or they don't have as much choice to, to, to get out and meet the other athletes. So speaking of yeah. the, the players that you do coach or you have coached in the past, we know that you were a coach at the Center of Excellence in Denmark, many singles players, men singles, lady singles players. Do you have any players at the Olympics in Tokyo now? Yeah, you know, uh, it's really funny when you look at the draw, you can really feel that the Center of Excellence made a huge impact, uh, right, in the preparation for these players. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting to see because like when I watch now, uh, uh, like Felix Bures said, uh, I've coached him for three years, uh, like some other players like, like Lino Munoz, Artem Potrev, Martina Repiska, uh, Matthew Abella. There are just a few players, actually. I'm afraid to forget someone, but a lot of players were in the center uh, longer or shorter. But uh, like some of them uh, were uh, there or are there for three, four years, and some of them w were coming for camps, and some of them were were coming for a few months. So uh, actually, a lot of players like Julian Paul, uh, uh, like Iranian girl and Pakistani girl, and uh, Bei Wen Zhang. So uh, like a lot of names, I don't want to mention too many because I'm afraid I'll forget someone. Uh, but yes, a lot of uh, names there. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've definitely mentioned a pretty exhaustive list already. So uh, I'm sure everyone that has been through the Center of Excellence will have brought on, you know, new new learnings and experience from there as well and can feel the support um, that you are providing them from a distance. Now, Kestudis, you've been a men's singles player yourself uh, at, 
and a very competitive one at that. And when you're looking at the current men's singles competition at the Olympics, very high caliber, of course, who do you think is going to take home gold? Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's a question that we hear like very often uh, these weeks, uh, uh, right? These days, and uh, the tournament have started uh, pretty calm, but now uh, we see that players are gearing up, uh, and some some not expected results are coming up. Some upsets are coming up. Uh, the men, the men's singles category is uh, s- still, I think. Uh, uh, on a pretty calm stage, but now you can feel the tension is coming up. And I feel uh, uh, when I was in Denmark, I was often going to the national center to see the practice. And I thought that uh, the way Victor was practicing, the, uh, the way he was improving all the time, I feel that uh, I really want, and I feel that he can uh, take back the title. Of course, we don't know Momoda, uh, how uh, is his preparation? He uh, he uh, really hasn't played a lot of tournaments. Uh, we don't know the Chinese uh, like players, so it's really like interesting and a little bit of a secret uh, the shape that people are in. But uh, the way I see it, uh, I would like Victor to win. I would like Momota to be there in the final because I feel it would be an epic final. Uh, and I feel that Ginting uh, might surprise because the, the the confidence he has started with, uh, I pretty liked it. And he's got the physicality, he's got the speed, he's got uh, the uh, experience. And mm, like most of all, I would say the physicality to go all the way through. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yes, of course, I see that Antonsen uh, might be somewhere there, but... Uh, uh, but let's see how physically uh, confident, how uh, how physically fit he is to go like all the way through the whole tournament. Yep. So three main players, I think you said Victor Atterson, Kento Momoda, and Anthony Ginting. So, Kathiris, it was a pleasure speaking to you today to hear your predictions and get your thoughts. And we hope that your predictions come true. Do we? Do we? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, best regards, guys. Uh, We're going to have a great Olympics, so let's enjoy that. All right, so Jeff, in terms of two do not miss matches, mm-hmm. today, t- tonight uh, at 8 p.m. local time, we've got Lee So Hee, Shin Sung Chan versus Du Yue and Lee Yin Hui. I think before this morning, we were thinking that this would have been the Koreans' do or die match. Yeah, um, what, what, what happened, Henry? Well, we had the Australians. Australians? Aussies. The Aussies beat the Danish women's doubles pair this morning. In three uh, sets. Which actually guarantees, or well, gives, um, gives the Korean pair um, the opportunity to, to get back uh, into, into the game. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're going to move on into, into the knockout round, mm-hmm. uh, regardless of whether they... Um, they win or lose against the yeah, Chinese, Yeah, exactly. Right? So it's no longer a do or die match, but the, these two pairs are going to be very interesting. It's kind of like a sword and shield fight. So for Korea, it's the, it's the, the two powerhouses. Um, you, and then you've got Du Yue and Lee Yin Hui, who I think when they defend, they defend so forward that they're able to convert a uh, defense into attack very yeah. quickly as well. That's why Sword and Shield is, is, is what, I'm, what I'm calling this particular match. Mm-hmm. And I think it's going to be a very interesting one. They do have a zero to three head to head against the Chinese pair. So they have never beaten the Chinese pair. So originally when it was a do or die match, it's kind it's... of like it's now or never. Yeah. 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 But yeah, just going back to the, I guess, the Australians versus the Danish, that's actually going to send the Danes home. Yes. Um, which that's, that's, that's ridiculously huge. upsetting. It's, yeah, right. it's a, that's a huge upset by the Australians and, and they're letting the Koreans go through as well. So really interesting match there. Um, then we go to tomorrow morning session. Mm. We have so many good matches there, including Too all many. of the mixed doubles. The quarterfinals are starting, but let's mm. start with women's singles. Mm. 9 a.m. local time. We've got uh, Kim Ga-yoon mm-hmm. and Yeo jo, uh, Yeo Jamin, Jamin from yeah. Singapore. Now, I saw Jamin play at the World Championships in 2019 in Basel, Switzerland, mm. and she beat Yamaguchi there. Yeah. She, she's a pocket rocket, like she's really fast, she, she can attack really, really well, but world ranking wise, Kim is obviously the one that's got the seeding and is mm. a lot higher in the ranking. 
Yeah. Mm. And as far as head to head's concerned, as you said, yeah, Yo Jamin actually has a 3 1 head to head against Kim Ga Un. So she's yeah. actually up, even though she's not the seed in the group. Mm. I think the challenge will be whether Kim Ga Un can take her on at the front and mid court. Because um, Yo Jamin is very fast. Um, but Kim Ga Un's got the, the deceptive skills at the front, of the front of the court. But she is prone to mistakes as well. So. Yeah, yeah. Who are you going to go with for this one? I'm going to go Jamin. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think that's a potential, but I think that. I think that she's 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 fast, but I think she can get bullied around the court a little bit. And I think that Kim is quite strong in mm. that way, so I think she might bully her around the court a bit. Um, not that not that Jamin can't keep running and keep keep up, mm. but I think that that pressure could surmount to to some errors and yeah. potentially some winners from Kim's side. So I'm going to go yeah. with Kim. Okay. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think um, I certainly think that Jamin will because of her shot quality, um, sometimes not quite there. I think the, the bullying aspect that you mentioned with Garwin is, is definitely going to be there. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think Jamin's very good at retrieving. So yeah. I'm going to go yeah. with Jamin. Um, okay. just, just to recap, so, sorry, on Lee, Lee and Shin uh, versus Duyue and Lee and Hui. We didn't cover who you, who you would have thought would win that one. I'm going to go with the, the Chinese. I think yep. they're just a little bit too solid. Like we did see Lian Shin lose to the Danish pair, mm. um, which yeah, we wouldn't expect. That was a, that was a big upset. But I think that the Chinese have just all the Chinese have just been so solid, mm. rock solid. So I don't see them losing that match. Yeah. Okay. That's mm. fair enough. I, I think. I think that originally it would have been a lot of pressure on the Koreans, um, but now that the, the pressure's off, yep. I think it's going to be a very tight match. So okay. I, I, I'm actually going to say maybe the Koreans will take this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Big, big call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then finally, uh, tomorrow morning again, mm -hmm. we've got 10:20 uh, a.m. local or Tokyo time, uh, and that's Jung Su Wei, Huang Yao Chong versus Praveen Jordan and Malati Octavianti. We did talk about that as a pretty brutal first first match in the knockout rounds. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, head to head, seven uh, two. So the Chinese pair are up, mm -hmm. but. Well, but the uh, Pra Praveen and uh, Octavianti have actually won their last two meetings. So yeah, yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty. That's an interesting, interesting one. Uh, I think it's just gonna really be dictated by Praveen. We've said yeah. this before. How what Praveen is gonna come? Is mm. it gonna be that aggressive or the passive one? Is he gonna be hitting his shots? Is he gonna be making his attack count? Mm. Or is he gonna be more relaxed and passive? And if he can't get that brutal smash that he's got into the game. I think they're going to struggle. It'll, yeah, it'll be a very tricky one. I think what we've seen so far of, of Praveen and Malati, I, I don't think they're going to measure up. But mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, personally, I, I'm going for Jeng Suwei and Huang Yao Chong. Okay, I think, I probably think the same, even though I would like to see Praveen play better because I, I really enjoy watching him play yeah. with his skill and both of them, mm -hmm. uh, Malati as well in their skill. So yeah. I'm going to go the Chinese as well, but hoping for a really we, good we're match. Ho yeah, we're hoping to see Praveen, the top level Praveen that, that we've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Malati, of course. All right, so let's go to what everyone thought about who has the best technique in women's singles. So we did have a few options there but it is Tai Su Ying who has won this. Um, we, we both thought it was Tai Su Ying. No, no, and actually, you thought it was Tai Su Ying. I went oh, you said it was Ratchinok, sorry. Yes, mm. yes, but uh, she's come through at 81%, so it's been a pretty huge um, dominance by, from Tai Su Ying in terms of her technique. Yeah, so I guess, well done to Tai Su Ying. Mm -hmm. Great technique. Uh, in terms of the next question for you guys, uh, which men's doubles uh, player is this? So a bit of a secret sound. Yeah. Listen, listen to this. So we do have four options for who makes this sound on court. So we have four options there. We've got Marcus Finaldi Gideon. We've got Aaron Chow. We've got uh, Anders Rasmussen from Denmark. And last, we've got Kigo Sonoda from Japan. So who do you think it is? Make sure you comment below. All right. So now we come to Razor Racket. Who are you raising a racket for today, Jeff? Or who are we raising a racket for? Look, I think it goes to say Li Yang and Wang Chilin. Look, they have saved their Olympic dream um, by beating Marcus and Kevin just this morning in an epic, awesome match, three sets. So tribute to them. Well done. You've saved your Olympic journey. We raise a racket to you both. All the best. So 
We're wrapping up this episode now, episode five of the Tokyo 2020 show. Uh, for those of you wanting and dying to watch the live coverage or just getting updates in general, make sure you check out the screen now, which is where you'll see the match center. You'll see the live blog and the URL to where you can find your local broadcast coverage uh, where you are, which, whichever country you're in. And we do have the order of play to show you. And so that's gonna be popping up on the screen right now to check out which matches that you wanna tune into. Yep, and so that will start at 6 p.m. tonight and 9 a.m. 9 a.m. is a little bit different, 9 a.m. tomorrow. All right, so thanks everyone for tuning into episode five of the Tokyo 2020 show. We hope you're enjoying the Olympic games as much as we are. There's so many great games and everything is starting to heat up. So. Look, we'll, get, we'll keep you updated. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, same time, uh, similar time. Uh, and we'll see you then. Bye, see you tomorrow.